I am so ready to take this AP test and just get it over with, honestly. But you know what? I feel confident in myself. Honestly, like, just thinking about it, I think I can do this because, obviously, you know, I have the right writing utensil to take it. Um, I've been talking with my professor after class, making sure that I understand the concepts that we've been covering. I think that I understand pretty much everything from the textbook. I have been going over every other practice uh, AP exam. You know what? We're going to do just fine here. Right? Um, I'm Wrong. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. So, oh, that that's right. We have to do 55 questions in 55 minutes. Okay, no, no big deal. I mean, just take a minute on each question. Just got to hurry up a little bit. Uh, what? I don't even remember we're taking this on any of our previous. Oh, oh, you know what? Okay, just skip that for now. Keep coming back and... Oh, <laughs> great. I only have 20 minutes and I have like 30 questions. Okay, well, I got to hurry up. Oh, and time's done. Okay. All right, well, my next short answer will go fine, I'm sure. And oh, Lord, have mercy. When did we even cover that? Okay. You know what? My DBQ can't be that bad, nor can my long essay, right? Because I at least really want a three. And you know what? I'm going to be stressing now because I've been doing this class for so long now. I have actually been doing good in the class. So I don't understand why I am freaking struggling with this test. You know what? Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to be determined and everything's going to be. Oh. What the f- Okay, so yes, <clears throat> I know that was a very corny intro to do. I honestly didn't even know that was a spontaneous intro. A lot of things have been kind of spontaneous, and this video, I did not know if I was going to make, honestly, because I was just... I didn't know if I should have obviously made this video in the first place, because I am mostly a gaming channel, but some of y'all have told me, hey, I really like your ranting videos, so you should keep doing them from time to time. So I was like, you know what? I think this is the perfect time to tell y'all why College Port is a bunch of bullcrap and why it is one of the biggest scams known to man for college. Wow, I know that's that's a lot to take in and a lot of y'all are like, Pfft. you're just probably pissed off over a bad test score. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit. But that's besides the point because there is actually a lot wrong with College Board and how they are dealing with the test. Now, if y'all don't know, College Board typically deals with what most people would know for the SAT, but they also deal with AP exams as well. <laughs> Funny enough, I hate both of them. I think they're really stupid, and I think they're very outdated ideas. But we'll get more into that in a little bit. But just to let y'all know, so essentially College Board will make you either pay for money for these tests or in, you know, your free trial edition for the first SAT, which you obviously don't know what's going to really be on there. And you obviously are going to be freaking out because you feel like you're running out of time to answer questions that are almost impossible to answer sometimes. Unless if you are a freaking genius, especially on the math without any calculator, then, you know, you're going to feel a little bit stressed while taking it and obviously even though it's a free one, you're like, oh, good, I get a free one. Yeah, well, you're going to have to pay for the next one, buddy. So just get ready for that one, okay? Now, I don't know if it's free for everyone who gets to take it the first time around, but I know for myself, my first SAT was free. I should also point out my only SAT because it's not so much that we couldn't necessarily afford to do the other SAT, but we were a little bit more tight on budget. And I just obviously honestly didn't feel like retaking it again now let me give you all a little bit backstory of why i am talking about this and then i'll kind of move in into my what happened with me personally and just what everybody else is kind of thinking about along the way okay so big shout outs to shiv vzg uh story time with jeff and jordan taylor because i will be kind of implementing a little bit of their video in my video just to give y'all some background information for what they had to go through or just kind of like them talking about the situation overall because I, I think this is about the appropriate time to be talking about college board and the crap that they are trying to pull okay now i am well out of my high school well i shouldn't say well out freaking didn't sound like i'm 40 now i look a little old but i'm not that old i just shaved i shouldn't look that old but anyway so yes i'm pretty i'm, I'm kind of fresh out of high school i mean i haven't been in for two years but i still pretty pretty well remember the ap test the sat test and stuff like that essentially 
how they go about this is for AP, if you don't know, you have to take certain AP classes. And from those AP classes, basically all they do is gear you for the AP test. So they are in a sense teaching you the material that you need to know because you need to know material from the high school, whatever the high school standards are, and then whatever college board standards are for that AP curriculum. Now, that might not sound so bad, but the bad thing is, all of that is pretty much meaningless unless if you pass the AP test. Now, you can take an AP class to boost your GPA, which is totally fine if that's what you're going for, but really and truly why people take the AP classes is because they want the college credit. Everybody wants a little bit of college credit. And the bad thing about that is you have to pay for the exam at the end of the year, which you could possibly fail or at least not pass that well and then not get the college credit at all. College Board is over advanced placement courses. And the thing is, College Board collaborates with um, your high school, and little do you know, like, if your AP teachers, if you pass, like, the exam, they get a bonus check. But that's T for another day. And the thing about AP classes is you're learning with that teacher all year long, you're doing really good, whole year long, and you have to take an end of your test which is your AP exam. And what the AP exam is, it can go either way. You can either pass it or fail it. You have to have a, at least a three to pass. So one thing about AP is you're going the whole year long. You're doing really good on your test quizzes that your teacher's giving you. But if you do not pass that test at the end of the year, you just wasted your time. That's one thing I don't like about AP. Another thing about AP is, how do I say it? It's not accepted everywhere. Like colleges like UCF, FAMU, UF, all those schools right there, they do take AP, but you have to have a certain score. So for example, I had a couple AP classes that I actually passed under my belt, but the problem with my US history course was my school wanted you to have at least a four to pass, and I ended up having a three. Although a three is considered passing, at the end of the day, most colleges would like a four or five. So, you know, that's a lot. And those tests can really go either way. They change every year. It's, you know, sometimes different materials incorporated into it. So it's just like really like you're wasting your time if you don't pass the exam. Even if you do pass the exam, your college can be real petty and say, oh, I don't want that. Nope, it doesn't count. No credit. So right there, it's like, ooh. This is a little fishy. The fact that so many people say that they can like pass the AP classes just fine and even with A's but then they come back and get a two on their exam yes I'm talking about personal experience here so yes let me tell y'all a little bit about what I went through and I only took one AP class and then I'll tell y'all where I got about my other college credits from but anyways so with my one AP class I ended up taking world history and that was a lot of information for one to even try and grasp for one really student to even think about getting a really high grade. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. Okay, obviously there's a, a lot of students who pass it, who get decent grades. Okay, that's all well and dandy. But there's also a lot of unspoken people who don't talk about it because they're embarrassed of talking about it. But you know what? At this point in my life, I'm not embarrassed to talk about what I made. So I ended up you know, studying for this though. And don't think I didn't, oh no, no, no. I went through my textbook a lot. I got all A's on my test, at least pretty much all my tests, maybe a couple here and there. I had an A in the class, a pretty high A as a matter of fact. I talked with the teacher a lot of the times to make sure that I knew what we were covering. I Even before the exam day, I talked to him extensively about what might be on the exam and this and that. Um, and I never felt like I was struggling with the class. I did what he assigned us, like the DBQ, the document-based questions, like we did the essays. He thought they were okay. Apparently, College Board thought otherwise. I ended up going, and I remember this very clearly, I remember getting off, and I was like all nervous, because I don't, I'm not a big test taker, I hate tests, I get very stressed about them, especially big tests, right? So, I got off, and I just remember telling my dad, okay, bye, I'll see you later, you know, I was a little nervous, and I ended up getting, and they had the room set up in the gym. So, I took it, I didn't feel that confident about it in the first place, didn't feel really confident about it afterwards. So 
I ended up taking it and lo and behold, after a while, I found out I got a two, which if y'all don't know, a two basically means, oh, yeah, even though you have an A in the class and you actually excelled in the class, we're not going to give you the college credit because you need a three at least. Explain to me how one test defines your overall college credit when colleges don't even do that themselves. Now, you know, if you take a test in college, obviously you can't redo that test either. And it's going to account for a big portion of your grade, whether it be like 15% or 20%. And it might be even multiple tests though. But at the same time, you can still get the college credit even if you did poorly on the test. Okay, now it's kind of unlikely, especially if you're doing bad on everything else. But if you do good on everything else and you might, you know, one test grade out of the whole thing, you know, you, you weren't doing good that day. Okay, well, that's fine. You still, you still are going to get a college credit with like a C or B or something like that. Okay, maybe even a D. Uh, you know, they D's get degrees or whatever they say. So it is what it is with that. But with AP classes, apparently, you need to pass a full test to get the college credit. Okay, so that to me is strike one on their part. I don't even understand how that is applicable to colleges. That's not setting you up for college. That's setting you up for failure, okay? That's setting you up for stress. And I know that I was hella stressed when I first took that. And I did my first AP class in sophomore year. So I'm very glad I got... Um, that are the way to experience it and to be like, oh crap, this is not for me. The AP is not for me. So you know what I ended up doing? I ended up doing dual credit because dual credit was so much freaking better for me. I took a, I took like a social science at TCC and my, with my dual enrollment. And I did really good the entire semester, but I failed the final. I still passed the class, but I failed the final. So if I actually did that class with advanced placement, if I did really good the whole time and failed the final or the college exam to end up the AP exam, I would have not gotten credit. Well, you know, you talk dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is a lot more accepted. Dual enrollment, most colleges aren't that picky. So example, when I went to UCF, they took all of my dual enrollment credits, no problem. As long as I passed the class, of course, but still, it really gets you prepared for college too. Going from high school to university is a big, big jump. I personally did dual enrollment to university and I still was struggling, but um, I only could imagine if I didn't do dual enrollment. Once again, that a lot of college kids can tell you that even though they might have got the AP credit, the AP does not apply to college. Whatever you were trying to do in uh, with the AP classes, it's not going to be the same in college. It can be vastly different. Now, some, some, some teachers might try and go through the similar approach of what AP classes did. But in all my years of college, which has just been two, but still, in my two full years of college, I have not once encountered a class that was similar to an AP class that the one I took. And I was not as stressed because I was, my grade was not writing on one full test people. Okay, it literally was not. And that was totally fine with me. I am very good with getting my work done, with talking in class, with discussions, with all this and that. And even on my regular usual tests, I might not have as much anxiety with them. So I feel more confident about them. But with this AP test, you're over here like stressing the French out because you think that you're gonna fail it. And then you probably ended up failing it because you already have that attitude. Um, but also because AP tests are full of crap anyways. But um, so that also brings to my next point about um, dual credit and how much money that ended up saving me in the long run. Because this is what it's weird because it felt like dual credit was kind of like a cult in my school a little bit. Like they'd be like, oh yeah, there's this AP classes that you should really, really, really take. And these are good for you. And there's IB. Oh, IB is like, this is going to be, if you do this, you're awesome. Even though it's almost impossible for a lot of students to do. But if you do this, you're going to be one of the best students ever to excel out of here. And you're going to be doing great things and stuff like that and they're like oh and uh yeah 
this little thing over here, yeah, that, that's dual crit. I mean, if you want to take it, you can. So it was never really that pushed. And I don't remember how I even found out about it, but I remember that I found out about it and I was like, okay, I, I'm not going to be doing IB, obviously. And AP was not my style. Once I took dual class, dual classes, dual credit classes, you guys, everything changed. I was easily getting the grades that I wanted to in those classes. Everything was going so smoothly in those classes. And I ended up getting all the credits that I wanted to for at least like more than a year of college worth that I didn't have to pay for. Unlike AP, where you have to pay for a test that you might potentially fail. It's not that challenging. Like it's 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 going to be difficult but it's not like impossible so that's why i always preach dual enrollment over ap because ap is a scam ap is a scam period like anyone that i talk to that's in high school or you know did all those ap classes in high school and went to college they say wow i wish i were dual enrollment plus dual enrollment oh my gosh this is the biggest part about dual enrollment Dual enrollment saves you dumb money because the school is paying for all of these classes, your books, all of that. Like right now, I'm finna go into my junior year of college next semester. So starting this spring, it's junior season. Junior season because I did dual enrollment. I was so used to like the school paying for my tuition and books. And I got to college and I was like, mm, why are my books so expensive? But you know, that's how I was like, uh. I'm glad I'm not walking into this like with no credit. One tells you that AP is the best option. It's not. This is something I preach to everybody. Everybody and mama. I don't know. Like anybody that asks you, I'm gonna say, oh, do enrollment, period. Like there's no, well, maybe AP would be better. No, AP is not good. Waste of time. Like. And then I, I ended up going to college with a 4.0 because of it. Now, granted, the only downside for like dual credit classes is the fact that, um, if you do bad with the grades, that is the grade that's going to stick with you through college, okay? So there is that, that's kind of bad. But at the same time, if you're pretty calm, if you feel like, you know what, I can do the classes, I feel pretty confident in them. It's just the test that was bugging me. Yeah, dual credit is the obvious answer to go with. And that for me was way easier. And now let's talk about the SAT a little bit. Okay, now that is more bull crap than the AP test. Think about it. They're a monopoly that makes money exclusively off of exploiting misled children. They make tests that aren't actually indicative of academic achievement and then sell them by the millions because they're a necessary part of college admissions. And the tests themselves, they might as well have been written and organized by a lobotomized orangutan snorting crack and bashing his head into a typewriter. For example, the length of your SAT essay is actually a better indicator of your score than its actual content. In addition, College Board regularly administers tests that have been leaked and available for years, indicating that they're either too stupid to Google leaked SAT exams and look to see what's up there, or they're too lazy to write a new test to replace the leaked one, so they just recurve the test and screw over all the kids who took it. Let me tell y'all something. The SAT is such an outdated test, and it even has origins to it being racist as well, and let me just show you all a little bit about what I'm talking about. You want to know another fun fact? The SAT had its origins in a test that was meant to prove that minority groups were genetically too stupid to be educated. Here's a direct quote from Michael Brigham, the creator of the SAT. The army mental tests, which were tests he helped design, had proven beyond any scientific doubt that, like the American Negroes, apologies for the language, the Italians and the Jews were genetically ineducable. It would be a waste of good money even to attempt to try to give these born morons and imbeciles a good Anglo-Saxon education, let alone admit them to, into our fine medical, law, and engineering graduate schools. He also said that the reason he designed these tests was to prevent, and this is a direct quote again, the continued propagation of defective strains in the present population, otherwise known as, again his words, the infiltration of white blood into the Negro. And apologies for the language again. Not the nicest guy, if you ask me. Look, I know the SAT today isn't the same one that Brigham created, but it's not like the College Board has even bothered to address the fact that the SAT had its origins in a white supremacist movement. This passiveness is still morally degenerate, perhaps more so than if they were actually anti-minority. So I'm still going to give them flack for it. So, from now, those facts, from that fact alone, alright, we already have a big issue 
with how um, the SAT came about and why it's even still present today. Now, obviously, it's not in the same format that it was those years ago, but it's still pretty relevant to the situation now and today. And the fact that so many colleges rely on this SAT, this one test, to sometimes determine whether you get in or not is a bunch of bull. Why are we so fixated on one test rather than the overall student, okay? Now, let me tell y'all a story about the SAT. I did take it one time, and like I said before, I didn't wanna pay more money to take another one, because, I mean, again, it's not that we couldn't, but they were still a little bit pricey, and I just didn't feel like going through that bull crap again. And again, I studied for this test too. I made sure that I read through the book that you, they told you that you get, which huh, lo and behold is another thing you needed to buy for the SAT. Wow. Um, or for a college board in general, really. So you could buy the book and then you could sometimes have tutors, which, you know, tutors are offered here and there um, specifically for the SAT. Um, of course, you can keep retaking it as much as you want. You'll just, of course, pay out of your pocket and all that crap. So I didn't feel like taking it again. So I tried to go in as confidently as I could for this SAT. Now, what I got on my SAT, I can't tell y'all because honestly, I don't even remember at this point exactly what I got. But I believe it was like an 1100, which is okay but it's not the best okay it's about it's about above average ish but most colleges are like yeah that we don't want that okay so because of the sat i could not get into the college that i originally wanted to get into now the reason why that is so stupid in the first place is because I was in the top, and I'm not trying to gloat here, but I'm just trying to give you all a little bit of perspective. I was in the top 9% of my class. I had over a 4.0 GPA. I was in so many extracurricular activities and clubs, and I was even president of two of them, okay? All of this, I mean, you know, I tried to do everything that a college would look for. I mean, obviously, you know, I just want to do good myself, and I love the clubs I was in, but I also was trying to, you know, prepare myself to get ready when I had to apply for college. So I ended up getting kind of turned down by the college that I really, really wanted to go to. And they basically said, well, you know, you can go to here, but first you got to go to one year over at our sister college. And then you can come over to here and then we'll, we'll kind of think about you. But first of all, Jordan ain't nobody's second choice. Okay, Jordan is definitely not anybody's second choice. And then second of all, I got an offer to a college that was even closer to me that offered way better scholarships and grants than the college that I wanted to go to. And now I love this college that I'm going to. So it was a blessing in disguise. But at the same time, it pissed me off that one test, the one SAT test that I took, and obviously I could have kept taking it over and over again to get a better grade. That's so much money to put into one stupid test. One of their claims I took particular issue with was the fact that they're technically a 501c3 nonprofit, just like the Red Cross. And yet they made 900 million and paid their CEO 1.455 million in 2016. After seeing this horror for myself, I took to Twitter and as soon as College Board made a tweet, I was there to reply asking them why they made 900 million a year in spite of the fact that they were a nonprofit. This crusade was short lived, however, because just two days after I started responding to College Board tweets, I got IP banned from Twitter and had my account deleted without warning. When I went to log into my account, it said that it didn't exist. Even searching my account name on Google turned up no results. Nothing in my email gave an explanation for why my Twitter had been deleted or even told me that it had disappeared. I had never had any strikes against me before. My Twitter had actually been pretty inactive until I started responding to College Board. So this was the only possible reason for the ban, as crappy and corrupt a reason as it was. It was as if my Twitter had not only ceased to exist, but all traces of it had been completely wiped off the face of the earth for good. The moral of the story is, don't support College Board if you want to have a clean conscience. But just one test out of everything that I've done in my whole high school career, it defined where I was going to go, even though I was making the good grades and even though, you know, I was in the top 9% of my class out of one of the biggest classes that our high school has known, by the way. Um, 
that they just still didn't accept me because of that test. Now, I don't know about y'all, but something ain't right here. And something is very, very fishy about the fact of how much money College Board ends up making from all of these AP tests and all of these SAT tests. Isn't it a little funny that are like, sure, we'll, we'll bribe you with your first test, but <laughs> you're probably not gonna do that good because obviously this is gonna be your first experiences and you're also gonna be stressed as hell because this is time and you're really not gonna know what you're doing. So you know what, it's okay. You can retake it again. You could get an even higher score, but on one condition, as long as you pay us just a little bit, we'll be all fine. And the same can pretty much go for AP tests, you know, oh, you're doing so well in your AP class. Bravo, good job. Oh, but don't forget, you need to pay us for this test that you might not pass. But if you pass it, oh my God, you'll have good grades and you'll also have your college credit. Wouldn't that be so awesome? If you Google how much does college board make a year, you'll find that the answer is over $1 billion. How do they get so much? Easy, test fees. There's PSAT fees, SAT fees, score fees, and the most expensive of all, AP test fees. If you take the PSAT twice, take the SAT twice, take five AP exams, and send SAT scores to 10 colleges, you're paying college board over $800. Say my brother Chewy took the October 2019 SAT and wants to know his score to see if he should retake it in November. The score release date for the October exam is October 18th, which is after the November registration deadline. But he can still sign up for the November SAT through the late registration deadline. He just has to pay an extra $30. Please can anyone explain to me how this makes sense and why we're letting a monopoly control the students of America and how they're going to go about college, okay? Now, fortunately, like I said, I didn't necessarily have to deal with a monopoly. I mean, you had three choices, but IB was pretty much like AP, just more advanced on top of that. <laughs> um, so I'm very happy for anybody who can do IB. Obviously, you know, more power to y'all. I am not saying that I, IB was like a scam now and IB is IB is different than AP okay but I'm talking about AP overall just how college board goes about these exams and how they go about SAT is not right in my eyes and I hate the fact that they basically pressure so many students into taking this one huge test whether it be the uh, SAT or AP and that rides on so much of your future to me that doesn't make sense now I know most of you are going to be like, oh, so you're just advocating for dual credit. Not necessarily. I mean, if you don't even want to do college classes in high school, don't pressure yourself to do it. Just do what you want to do. Now, I'm not saying don't challenge yourself. You should always try and challenge yourself. But if you feel like, okay, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm just not making the grades or I'm not doing as well as I want to, then don't do it. Okay. This is also why I'm a little bit concerned when some counselors are like, well, you know, we want to wait for you which I don't know if this is for everybody, for my school in particular, they're like, well, we want to wait for you to see how you're doing in this class. Uh, I was doing poorly in this class. Thank you. Get me out <laughs> so I can actually go excel somewhere else. Pre-AP classes are different, obviously, because you don't have to take the AP exam with them. But pre-AP classes are just fine with me because it's the class overall that I have to deal with it and not this stupid test that they basically gear you up for. And in the process, you lose some of that learning experience that you were supposed to have for the actual material in classes because they're over here trying to prepare you for this stupid long essay that you're never gonna probably have to do again for college. Okay, I'm not getting on the teachers, but also teachers do get actually a bonus the more that they, uh, the more that students do good on AP exams. So that's and that's also a little bit fishy as well. But, you know, as Jordan Taylor says, that's another discussion. So there's just a lot wrong with College Board overall. And I think I've shared a lot of my opinions and I hope that I put a lot of the different perspectives of what people are talking about. Just how much a scam College Board actually is, how much money they're making off students, how they're stressing students out. Let's not forget the fact of how this previous, these previous AP exams were going, okay? Are we just going to let that slide and how everyone was stressed the hell out? Because you know what? If you didn't have good internet, if something was going wrong on their sites, oh, sorry, you just failed your AP exam and you have to retake it because of errors that are outside of your control. It looks as if their brain dead CEO has somehow managed to stop sorting crack for a second and smashed his concave head into the keyboard hard enough to create the mess that was this year's AP exams.
And so College Board went around and, with absolutely no regard to the integrity of the exams, mindlessly chopped out two-fifths of the content like an illegal logger in the Amazon. They then released the new bastardized syllabus to the public, only to pull it from their website a week later. I'm not joking when I say that it's harder to find a revised syllabus as a student than it is to find a McDonald's with a working ice cream machine. There's no way you can find this stuff by just looking at their website because the new syllabus is only given to AP teachers. And how do you become an AP teacher? You pay College Board. How do you justify that? Why can't students see the syllabus if they're the ones taking the exam? And even if they could pull an excuse out of their ass to justify giving it only to teachers, why do you need to charge them for it if the syllabus for every other year was free? After just the first AP, it became abundantly clear that the College Board servers consisted of five vacuum tubes and an anencephalic orangutan with a wrench super glued to its foot. Students worldwide weren't able to submit their exams because the servers couldn't handle anything more complex than playing Pong. And that's if they could manage to figure out how to submit their exams at all, because the submission portal supported as many file formats as the College Board IT department has functioning brain cells. It actually reminds me a lot of Fallout 76, because both were blatant cash grabs aimed at exploiting children that were completely pay to win. And that last point is extremely important, because these exams are inevitably going to favor more affluent test takers with a stable Wi-Fi connection and a good computer who don't have to worry about their financial situation during this outbreak. Isn't that just fun? Okay, and guess what? They will have to pay for the AP test again. It's a gold mine. It's a nice profit during the freaking pandemic. Wow, thank you, College Board. I, I'm so glad you're thinking of the students. So freaking glad. You, you have the students' best interests at heart. Social economic status isn't the only thing that these tests disproportionately favor. Ability is another one. Blind and deaf students, for example, aren't getting anywhere near the amount of support that they should be. In the place of actually useful accommodations, they get long-winded audio descriptions that sound like a fifth grader trying to meet a word limit on an essay in a single line of braille. Best of all, they've given the exact same time limit as everyone else. One New York student even filed a complaint against College Board about this, and I wholeheartedly support her. This is an abhorrent challenge not just to student rights, but human rights. And guess what happens when College Board screws up your exam thanks to nothing but their own ineptitude? You have to tell them what went wrong. No, you have to prove what went wrong, and then if College Board is feeling generous, they'll let you take your exam again. Please submit. Please submit. You have 1 minute and 55 seconds. Please submit. Please submit. It's been 1 minute and 37 seconds. How you cannot submit? Submit. Come on, College Board. Thank God. Hey everyone, I'd like to give a very quick shout out to the College Board. Uh, thank you for making me take a 45 minute test and then not letting me submit my, my response. And now I have to submit a request form to retake it. And I won't even find out if I can retake it until May 25th. Thank you. So anyways, guys, I know I've been ranting on a long time, but I just need to rant. Um, because I've been seeing more and more videos about College Board, about AP tests, about SATs, and a lot of them really resonate with me. And the funny thing is, a lot of them are coming out more recently than ever. Okay, so I felt like this was my place to actually say something and to get my story out there, to get more information out there from y'all, from these different people, and just show y'all why I believe College Board is a big scam and does not help you in the long run for college. So if you're thinking about taking AP test, try and take one like I did in my sophomore year. And obviously, you know, I mean, it was the first time around. Okay, maybe that would not have worked because, you know, it was my first time around. Maybe I would have done better if I continued it, but I excelled way better in dual credit classes. So just try and look for alternate options. Seek your counselors out, ask them, and make sure that AP is not the only way that you can go for your school. Because if it is, maybe you're just better off doing regular classes and just doing excelling in those. Because you know what? At this point, AP exams and SATs are really just out here to take your money. They really be out here doing that. There's, it, it, there's nothing more to it. That's it. Bottom line, honestly. So... Guys, 
I know this video is kind of long, so I'm going to end it here. I hope y'all got what I was talking about. And again, I wasn't trying to gloat on myself for everything I've done, but it's just funny to me how I can excel in almost every other aspect of school, except for the two tests that were designed by college board. And they ended up kind of costing me one college credit and the potentially to go to a college I liked. So anyways, with that being said, guys, I will see all of y'all in the next video or stream. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.